As the artistic director of the festival, I have been asked to moderate a discussion which has an enormously wide and complex subject and this makes me a little bit shy to touch it. Tradition and future and new music, roots, trends, perspective, and in the middle, of course, stands presence. The relevance of tradition, or as we should say, maybe better and plural traditions in contemporary music making in relation to possible perspectives for the developments in the future could be subject of at least a conference lasting one week, if not longer, because that's what's going on anyways. If not, but we have today only about 60 minutes of time for the panel discussion and about 15 minutes to debate the question coming from the outside, coming from the audience. Therefore, I'm really glad that we have this exquisite panel of four highly individual and diverse composers or music makers here with me, who not only create exciting, demanding music, but also who also reflect their music with respect to development and changes in a globalized society and to some parts in politics. All of them stand, in my opinion, in diverse positioning, in their artistic work at the very forefront of development. As we had said in the old, old times, they are avant-garde and they stand for highest quality, in my opinion. So let me first, since we are not playing any musical examples of the artists today, but just limit to the discussion, let me just give, make a short introduction and try to characterize the work of the composers very briefly. Old school, I start with Brigitta Muntendorf. Brigitta, you are based in Cologne, but you live a very modern life as a nomad in the continuum between reality and virtuality, between being an artist and being a user, being here and there and everywhere. You claim to work at the forefront of the digital revolution. Your paradigm is the term social composing. It means you make use of communication models used in the social media world. Your focus lies on transmediality, hybridity, multifaceted contextualization, which refers to all kinds of cultural reference systems, be it highbrow art, be it pop, be it daily media trash, the sensuality of media is your thing in interdisciplinary and cooperative genre-free forms. You have your own ensemble in a way, which is one good example for a new type of composer performer ensembles, which is Ensemble Garage founded in 2009. And so there is your music played, but there's also played the music of artists you feel like affiliated with you, you are linked to. Then we have Sandeep, Sandeep Bhagwati. Sandeep, you are already a nomad by birth. You are a son of an Indian father and a German mother. You have been born in India. You have been raised in Germany. You lived in Austria, France, in Canada, Canada in Montreal, where you still work. Um, you were a long year, long distance commuter between Berlin and Canada. And now just recently you moved with, with your family to Zurich. You run the Matra Lab in Montreal as a laboratory and platform for transcultural and transdisciplinary research and creation. You initiated and direct no less than three ensemble projects for practice in trans traditional music comprovisation, which is this fused term between um, improvisation and composition. These ensembles are Ensemble Extracte in Europe, Ecstasies, Ecstasies of Influence in Montreal and in India in Pune, Sangeet Prayag. Your main theoretical approach recently has been the criticism of what you call the urological art musicking. I love the term. 
we find out, I take it critical, but I love the term, the urological art music. Your main compositional impulse aims at the invention of dialogical and socially interactive forms of transtraditional aesthetics beyond pure interpretation. You believe in the productivity of cooperative misunderstandings. Then we have Turgut, Turgut Ergetin. You are born and raised in Istanbul. You left Turkey in 2009 to complete your musical studies in the US at Stanford University. You recently got the grant of the Berliner Künstler Program of the DID, the Berlin Artists Program of the DID in 2016. And since then you live now in Berlin. In the center of your compositional work, if I put it well, you deal with the features of sounding space as acoustic, psychoacoustic, and social space. Your work is spectral, deals with spectral resonances, algorithmic procedures, live electronic processing of interconnected instrumental resonances, for example, in your first string quartet. And you compose placement of performance in space. As abstract and complex as your work may sound, you understand them also as well as political statements. Anno, you are last. You are maybe the least nomadic composer of the four panelists. Born in Western Germany, you lived for ages in Berlin since 1990. But on the other hand, you travel quite a bit as a very active conductor of your own work and the works of other new music composers. You work with the most well-known ensembles of new music. You compose music often by applying algorithmic rules which germinates, grows, and dissipates from single cells in a steady stream of change, of transformation, variation, transition, and reconstruction. It could be perhaps called generative music, or maybe we could even also call it fractal music. Microtonality, the variation of tuning systems and non-European intonations, Arab music, for example, Korean music are important in your work. Hoppe, Enno, you direct the Ensemble Mosaic for many years now, since 1900. 98 in Berlin was one of the leading ensembles for contemporary music in Berlin and in Germany in general. Last year, we had the pleasure and the wonderful experience to hear your brilliant 60-minute piece Rundfunk radio for nine synthesizers, and you were using the patina of old synthesizer sounds. It was really wonderful. Thanks again for coming with the um, performance of the Ensemble Mosaic. So now to the subject, tradition, present, future, roots, friends, perspective. Where to start? I suggest to start with the yet unknown, the unforeseeable, the future. When Wenders once invited colleagues uh, to his hotel room at the festival in Cannes, to ask them to consult them all about the future of the cinema. And then he just turned the camera on, the tape recorder, and left the room. They left it, he left it alone. That's what I would like to do here as much as ever possible, to keep off and let you discuss about the future of new music, or should we even call it in the future new music? I don't know. There is 100 years of new music, and this is a term now, which uh, covers the longest period with one, uh, with one label ever in music history. So my question, is there a future? And then in the second step, please integrate the issue of how you deal with traditions, with the cultural backgrounds, how important it is for your music making, for your music writing. So. Let's look into the future. Who likes to start looking into the crystal ball? Brigitta, maybe you? Do you dare? Yes. 
Yeah, somehow it's so funny, no? Because uh, when we talk about contemporary music, I had to think about a talk I had yesterday morning with an orchestra trying to convince the brass instruments to sing, right? And to have these discussions about, yeah, but when they sing, they play special instruments, they have to be paid extra and they don't want. And actually, I faced a situation where I saw musicians that are able to uh, prevent um, yeah, a performance because they don't feel like. I don't feel like doing something I'm not used to. And this, uh, so in this moment, I faced the, the, we the weight of tradition. You know, we are dealing with in contemporary music sometimes, especially when we talk about, uh, about these big um, bodies like an orchestra. Um, so there is in tra tradition inside the contemporary music we have to we have to develop. We have really to do there a lot of work to get also the, these uh, these bodies to move or to to go forward. And on the other hand, um, uh, I had another talk last week, uh, which was also very interesting because uh, I, I'm um, it's about a new piece with an ensemble and they have 15 instruments. And I asked them, I would like really love to make a piece with only a quintet present on stage and the other nine musicians I would like to implement in an uh, augmented reality. So they are like the avatars interacting with the live musicians. And that raised a lot of questions. Yeah, but uh, our role as a musician is a role on stage. And then I thought, yeah, but on the other hand, if you say to an actor, um, you are only a real actor when you play on theater stages, but not in movies, then we would have only animal mu movies. You know? <laughs> So these were two two happenings uh, this week that made me think about this topic and uh, yeah perhaps um, uh, I I think so from my perspective I think that the future is really a discussion about the conditions we are facing we need conditions to raise innovation and these conditions we have to change and we have to develop inside the contemporary music as it is happening um, in culture in general, everywhere in the world. So if we think about rituals, no, about traditions in, uh, which are developing no, through different kind of countries and through time. So I think that this, these conditions for innovations, we have to change and especially regarding the fact of um, extending our bodies through technology because this is, really a part of our life. I remember very well when there was, I think 20 years ago, um, the Merz Musik was uh, launched and the Senator for Cultural Affairs in Berlin, Christoph Stölzel, he, he said, I wish the contemporary music sempiternal future. And that was for me, that was kind of so funny because I am interested in the present, you know, when there's some paternal future, what, is, what happens in the present? So what are we doing now? That for me, doing what I'm doing now is much more interesting that sometime, maybe sometime in the, in the some paternal future, there will be something different, sure. But uh, I think all what I'm doing as an artist uh, is my work is always doing, dealing with the present. Well, I would approach it from a different way, of course. Um, for me, the interesting, the key word in this, in this title or the key phrase in this title was tradition in new music. Um, and that's for me, that's interesting for me because the word roots that comes right after that um, uh, says something about radicality. It's the Latin word for, for root is radix. Mm -hmm. That's where radical comes from. So. There is a feeling very often that I encounter when I talk to people that nothing really radical can happen anymore because everybody has gone to such extremes already and that's it, you know. And I don't think that's that's true. I don't have the same feeling. And maybe I will say late, something later about it, but the words tradition and new music really spoke to me because of course, as Brickett has said, there's a tradition in new music. New, new, new music is a tradition now, 100 years. And there are certain traditions. There's Maybe it's a bundle of traditions of parallel traditions, but it is traditional in it by its very nature. Otherwise it wouldn't be taught at universities and played by traditional orchestras and traditional ensembles. So it's a traditional music and it's 
the for me the key change is to say it is one traditional music amongst many there are many other traditions that are also modern in their own way in their in their own parallel modernity as 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 the discourse goes and um so the question for me is if we go to the roots we have a, a tradition of new music that has firm roots in the european as i said in the urological tradition now seeing that there are so many other roots and you know my biography tells me that um, coming from an indian background that there's a there's an old tradition there too and in fact in one of my projects there was a moment where a member of the ensemble modern played for a group of indian musicians and then the oldest person in the room turned to the others and said you know my friends i think we must accept that the west also has a great music tradition that was a is a key moment for me to see that there's an, that there are other perspectives on newness and 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 tradition um, in the world and these traditions also evolved according to their own precepts um, and if we accept that then there are new roots for the future and I think that's something that we that we can look at and I'm very happy that this you know this talk happens virtually in Istanbul. Um, on the on the on the on the kind of a, a bridge city between different traditions, um, and um, I think that's that's one of the things that makes me feel that there's lots of radical things still to be made and thought and done, um, if we accept that the roots don't have to come from one tradition and we don't have to satisfy the orchestras, we don't have to satisfy the system that we that we work in. Um, uh, that we all work in, all, th all four of us work in, but we don't have to actually satisfy the system anymore. We could abolish the music universities, we could abolish the orchestras, music would still be made and made anew. That's my thought. Okay, I think uh, it's my turn to respond. Um, well, I, I guess I start with this uh, practice in new music that really, uh, maybe it's a cliche uh, that uh, bothers me, like, um, uh, like while being uh, in internally dependent uh, on the presumptions of its decline, new music to me uh, also seeks coherence in defining the new, uh, the next state of things and posits its uh, exteriority, that is um, its visibility in social context accordingly. And uh, as contradictory as it may seem, this uh, practice of effacing the presence of a thing and keeping it attributable suggests an understanding of uh, exteriority des designated as the uh, condition of the internal, which in this case might be our experiences as uh, artists or listeners. So as far as the future is concerned, I believe new trends will continue to rise, uh, displacing the old ones and perhaps opening new perhaps, uh, spaces as long as the shifts inherent to power structures are able to resituate the artwork, at least as an assessed value for memory that is as a product. And this is the case where we are facing with a new set of problems uh, as uh, most urgent issues we, we experience today in, new, in the new music scene, uh, as far as I'm concerned, stem less from aesthetic issues than political issues. And as far as I'm concerned, they manifest themselves more clearly in the extents of cultural politics around which uh, social spaces are organized. So having new trends leading up to new spaces does not necessarily mean being able to uh, produce those spaces, which entails um, some sort of autonomy uh, for the artistic output, or at least some say over uh, ordering of processes aiming at synchronizing the producing activity. Therefore, I suggest, uh, you know, when we talk about these things about like the future and stuff, uh, shifting our focus from perhaps defining the next state of things to the interrelationships of production and order, which set political connotations for knowledge uh, transfer, science codes, I don't know, uh, frontal relations that shape the spaces we live in. Uh, so a task of this sort requires, in my opinion, revisiting the way in which we engage with the concepts such as future or past. So I share uh, some uh, opinions with both with Enno and uh, perhaps uh, Sandeep, uh, because uh, the, the current modes of these concepts, especially in events as, as, as such as this one, tend to lead us to a historical reading that is diachronic, if not synchronic. And I see both ways of readings problematic as they tend to render geography 
as a uh, historical narrative, neglecting the simultaneity of space, thus the multiple and unconditioned nature of identities. Ignoring this. Uh, may I have a question? Yeah, um, indeed. Because um, I know that often the word politics uh, is used and when artists talk about uh, topics, what, what do you mean with political? Well, I mean, uh, I think, uh, Okay, uh, I'll put it this way. I think uh, um, when we equate uh, um, well, I mean, uh, let me put it this way. I think uh, you know we uh, tend to like uh, to talk about politics in, in events such as this, and uh, but I believe we offer no critique uh, but reverberated pretext while constantly reverbal verbalizing issues. Uh, ranging ranging uh, from cultural appropriation to gender inequality or racism, which are in fact matters that we need to address urgently. And uh, for me, uh, that's because we tend to equate uh, like space, like uh, geography, uh, mostly with like appropriated uh, representations. And this leads us to uh, pave uh, pave the way for making use of cultural or social references which appears significantly reduced in the political scale, which I, uh, why I have a problem with that. Uh, I don't know if I answer your question because uh, the word comes by with a class of connotations and uh, there are certain political connotations attached to each word we use like uh, future, past, tradition, culture and all these kind of things. So I, I, while I, uh, you know, uh, the, I uh, conceive the framework uh, in, uh, as a white one, uh, I also, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, certainly address uh, certain certain uh, current issues we are facing with. I just thought sometimes maybe we could we would always we would need more words because if you need uh, use words sometimes you just go into some uh, misunderstandings because like yeah. uh, Nono writes Fabrica Illuminata a political piece and he goes somewhere and wins the elections with the communist party so this is kind of a very traditional understanding of what politics is because these people were uh, members of parties and they were in this uh, the political process but I think uh, I think many artists are talking about politics to, to today they wouldn't do this so that is a different different way of thinking so maybe mm -hmm. if we think about politics is a special like uh, a handcraft like people learn how to be into some processes of how decisions about society are made maybe what we are doing in art is something completely different even if sure uh, we are in the way of how opinions are created, how we discuss, how we think about people, how we maybe we help people who have and whatever. But you know, um, maybe we need more words for that. Yeah, but but I I think mean, the, yeah, please. Sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I think the founding of an ensemble, you know, that um, some of us have done is a kind of political statement already. And the, way, the mode of working that you employ in creating your pieces, uh, a different ways of arriving at at music are political statements in themselves, not as a not as a party, not as party politics, but as something that uh, ch tries to change the way we interact with each other, and that's emin eminently political in nature. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, for me, what Turgut said reflected this kind of sense that we are talking about. What boys would have called social sculptures, you know, that we that we uh, create social events as musicians, and of course there's sound in them. That's our prime competence. Let's say it like that. But um, sound is only one of the many facets of of uh, the event that happens, and that's where the the political come to me comes in. It's always there, and. Uh, like in many things, every stage director knows if something is on the stage, it must have some significance. Otherwise, it should not be on the stage. So if we, we have political actions and we do political things, we should think about them. I think that's, that's a, a very important factor for me, at least. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for, for my part, I, uh, I mean, there's a difference between a political statement and the political con connotations of a thing. For me, uh, we don't need to uh, survey a party uh, briefing or 
declaration to be political, like uh, the very uh, um, title of this festival in itself, like new and newest music festival for me, uh, you know, carries a certain uh, po uh, political connotation uh, in with, with respect to um, um, basically uh, social spaces, I would say, or the order of uh, production and uh, the, the, the distribution, because I, uh, I think, uh, I mean, this is a different, uh, I, I don't want to direct the discussion to a different point, but because uh, uh, I also think that uh, as composers nowadays, we do not necessarily uh, have uh, works, but maybe uh, products or I don't know, productions or re uh, reproductions I, uh, that is open to discussion. But it's so interesting now, because also, um this term political music, uh, uh, I was uh, challenging with it a lot because for example, if we if we see the phenomenon of the protest choirs, you know, which raise up uh, all over the world. So, and which have been there all over the world all the time. So they really do uh, political statements and sometimes they are very uh, artistic. So they do it on the streets you know, somehow. So in which env environment are we placing something and uh, how how does it work? So we, we could never have the same power inside a concert space you know, doing this. This would be a, a, a weird reproduction or we refer it, uh, to it uh, on, on another level. But, uh, but I like really this idea um, of uh, being a composer or an artist having the responsibility to deal with the political themes on a, on a more subversive level, as you said, also Sandeep. So this, founding an ensemble, you know, dealing with, uh, uh, also with hybridity. So this is something which I really think is, is uh, connecting to the future, um, even though this term is very used uh, wrongly. So <laughs> it's used uh, like an in inflation, no? because um, normally we say, okay, something is hybrid when source A and B that come together and merges, but, uh, but this is just a surface. No? Hybridity really, um, came up in so many different sections. So in, in the social sciences in the gender studies in the biology in the media theory. So they all developed on uh, disconnected from each other. Um, this idea that two sources come together at the core of the differences, like at the core of the difference and they form a new entity. You know? And this is really connected to the, um, to the idea that culture is not, a, not something that is fixed and a fixed culture is something we are confronted with every day with all the right-wing parties. Right? So following this idea on, on this level of uh, connecting to each other, developing, as you also said, and changing our roots, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. taking other roots uh, to say, okay, I start from here. Uh, this is highly political, I think. What is really great about cultural activities so that what I think what I miss the most now in this uh, lockdown shit uh, is that uh, meeting people in culture. So the music, I can listen to the music on the internet, that is possible, or I can have to look some videos, but I don't have contact with people. So I think the intermissions or the after concerts, after theater, before, after you, you come out of this, you come from the cinema and you talk with people and the public is talking to each other and the culture makes that people think about whatever. They think about, uh, they, there's so many things uh, where you can think about, and um, all this kind of, um, the, dis the, dis the discussions will come, uh, will, are really one of the most important part of the cultural activities that's just missing at the moment. And, and I think that is one of the most important reasons for having all this culture is that there is a room where people go into uh, posing questions and to go be, be in a way they, that something happens when they don't understand. So maybe you can call this political, uh, I, I'm not sure if I would do it, but I think that's a social thing and it's a, a, the point of uh, losing safety and uh, thinking. It's just uh, that people are, are thinking and that is, uh, that's the most important about culture. But we, now we assume actually uh, a certain kind of concert setting, like the, uh, I, I missed all that 
also by myself, of course, but you know, uh, you're uh, portraying a certain uh, cultural scene uh, that is specific to some parts of the world, you know? Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, concert settings, uh, uh, you know, uh, present themselves or the uh, cu uh, culture present itself in the same manner as you speak in, in different parts of the world? Like, uh, for instance, I don't know, uh, Northern Iraq or Syria or uh, India, I don't know, Vietnam. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, there are certain parts in the, you know, we have to, I think, really abandon uh, this orientation, which is uh, quite uh, Eurocentric when we uh, talk about uh, things, uh, culture, uh, especially when we are uh, addressing the way in which people interact with each other. So maybe it's right that um, there's lots of efforts of making things po possible, like uh, concerts uh, happening as streams and putting things on the internet, but it's completely forgotten that the, the discussing uh, the, what, what was happening, that's just, it's just missing. So if you could organize, sort of the, for example, the festival in Stuttgart, they were really great and putting all the festival into the internet, that was really technical, that was brilliant. But they just, you know, that's 50% uh, is that you talk with people after the concert. So if you can organize this, uh, wait, maybe it could be even more interesting to have some online things. And maybe if, even if some years in, in, some, in the future, you know, when the concert halls are open again, you can have this, you just can, you just can keep that. Um, no, if I may just intervene, I have understood your, um, your argument is not uh, referring to the concert setting in general, but more basically to the missing social space in which we interact. And this is one of the miracles of music is that we all sitting together in the European tradition silently, just as a kind of uh, strangely anonymous, but very close communication about a very abstract matter, which is music, which is just organized sound, but uh, you are not referring to a certain type as much as I understanding because um, this is also missing in, in very different forms of, of uh, formats of how music can be presented. And as I feel the concert setting, fortunately enough, has undergone a strong dissolution. It has been complemented by a whole variety of more flexible and more adapted formats of presentation. But your point is the social context, the social space. Uh, Matthias, I absolutely disagree with two points. Uh, the first is that their music is abstract, and the second is that music is organized matter. I think music is pure emotion. Music is feelings, and it's people sitting together in a concert, they, they are it's like in a bathtub, they sit together and have the same feelings. And that is just the great thing about a concert. So if people are sitting there and thinking this is abstract and there's some, there's some uh, super intelligent composer who organizes matter, that is absolutely not interesting. So I think if there is not, you know, the, the notion what the music makes with you, um, if you don't have it, it's not interesting. But you know, uh... But there, I, I totally disagree because, um, you know, I made once an experience uh, when I was in Egypt and there were very old traditional singers and they were singing some songs for me and some colleagues. And they sing a song and I said, oh, nice. Uh, it's, it's a bit sad, no? I feel a bit sad. Like, oh, no, it's a wedding song. So, and they sang another one and I, I had no instruments to, to define, okay, why is this sad? I learned something different. So, in, the question is, what are emotions and sure. and the people who are sitting there? So would an audience in Germany, you know, refer in the same way to the music than an audience which is in, yeah. I don't know, in Singapore or something? No, sure. Your yeah, emotions, sure. First, I think uh, you can't define emotions like this piece is sad and this is funny. And, you know, this is so, you know, the music that I think is one of the great things in music that you have, you are able to have so subtle and so uh, you can d d differ the, uh, the emotion and the, the, the expression of the music can be just different in every second and you have no words for it. It's just like, uh, and um, so that makes no sense, but sure. Um, 
everyone has his own way of uh, of getting these uh, these expressions. Sure, I I don't think uh, necessarily like uh, the everyone has has to be touched in the same way. But I think that music is touching. That I think that is an important point. So even if you think that music is sad and the others think that it's it's uh, the the opposite, I think it's fine. But if you think this music is abstract and the other one thinks this is emotional, uh, this I think that is uh, that's the bigger difference. You know, I um, didn't make an I did, didn't make an opposition between emotional and abstract. I just said it's the magic of music that it is in itself non-referential to outer things and it has it will be perceived emotionally of course depending on certain cultural contexts and their knowledge of certain codes and so on and so forth but for me there is no opposition take also the abstract paintings um no erhabenheit uh, and so on and so forth um th there is no opposition between abstract and emotion um I would like to, to go um, at a tangent to what has been said about this because Matthias mentioned uh, my interest in creative misunderstandings. And that's precisely what Brigitte described as this kind of creative misunderstanding where something can appear that has a clear, you know, there's a clear idea about what this is in one tradition and somebody else comes and doesn't understand it, but still has a musical connection. That's where it you know, goes with Eno. There can be a musical, that's a mystery. There is a musical connection. This, we don't know what it is, but there's something that Brigitta heard and reacted to and felt that um, the singers, the Egyptian singers, didn't send in that sense. They didn't send that. They sent something else that they thought they were doing. And that's, for me, the, the beauty of creative misunderstandings that goes on if we have a multi-rooted system. And so what Matthias describes for me, and you know, if you're in, if you listen to a, something and you understand and you follow it in detail and so on, so on. And you don't think about uh, the social context. That's, that's for me a description of what happens if you're in a closed bubble, if you're in an in a, in a isolated system or in a, in a, in a self-referential system where people think they, the people on stage and the people on, in, in the audience seem to share the same social context, then they can forget, then they, they can forget about it. But if they don't, if, if they come from two different contexts, there's no chance that they will actually be able to engage with the same work in the same way. But that's for me, precisely the interest of living in this complicated world that we live in nowadays, where there's no defining primary culture anymore. You know, the, the whole talk about provincializing Europe is already 20 years old and it's going on steadily. And, and where we don't have this kind of uh, definition of where the music goes, I think the, the, the question about the future is always a very strange question. Like, like Turgut, I think there's, there's a profound um, mis-ease, dis-ease with this title for me, because what future um, in, the, in the science fiction novels of the 1960s and 70s and 50s, we were always told about what the future will be and it never happened that way. So. Um, maybe this is the same with all the futures that musicians imagined for their um, for their music. They will never; it will never happen that way. It will happen totally different, and climate change will come along or something else that totally invalidates all these projections into the future, and is a factor that we didn't realize. I always like a poem by Kavafis, the the Alexandrian poet, who describes the moment where we always prepare for something. We prepare for it. We prepare for disaster, for a catastrophe. And we all prepare it. And then the catastrophe comes from a totally different thing that we never expected, and we're dead. So um, for me, that is, the, that is the description of the future. There's always something happening that will make us obsolete. And it comes from an area that we don't know where it, where it will arise. And well, I think it's interesting that when you're talking about parallel universes and people who who don't understand each other because the context is different, I see this in every contemporary music festival in, <laughs> in Europe. You know, there are different composers sitting in the same room and doing different things, and they just don't understand each other. And for example, uh, there's a critic inside, and the critic uh, uh, believes that 
he the music is abstract and he doesn't get the the expressive context of what the the music could be like like this you know there are so many different ways of misunderstanding what i in a way think is really great about contemporary music because i think i don't know any musical um so it's a musical culture, what is as diverse as contemporary music, you know, when, when you are in the, when you are in the metal scene, you have other people are doing all, everybody does the same, and uh, you know, the contemporary music, every, everyone does just different things, just on, to the point where it's really impossible, you understand what your colleague is doing, and I like that, because uh, this is kind of, uh, this is for me, uh, this is not only in the future, but it's also, in, it's already present, we have kind of a differentiation in, in, in our musical context that is just great because um, we, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a way. But maybe the, the differences can be due to the fact that you're looking at everything with the very big looking glass, you know, very, you're very close. So the differences are very big. Maybe if you go further away, they're not that big. Yeah, the further you are, the more similar it is, sure. Yeah. So if you sure if you don't go further, all string quartets are sounding the same. But I think that's not interesting for me because uh, sure there is a way of you know all people look look the same because uh, I'm very far away. So that is kind of is that's not the way of uh, you know if you want to really deal. Yeah, but with maybe artwork, maybe to it makes no sense. Maybe to metal fans. Yeah, metal it's the same. Also, sure. it's, it's also as diverse as you sure. claim it for contemporary music. Sure. Absolutely. I, I second that as a diehard metal fan. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. But uh, I mean, as much as I also like these things about our context, uh, I think the way in which we uh, realize with the uh, cultural establishments who shape these contexts, uh, I think is highly problematic. This is what I wanted to say, actually. And uh, because uh, we address to certain things, there are misunderstandings, okay, uh, diver, you know, the diverse uh, works, uh, trends and everything, but uh, we still uh, seem to address um, uh, these issues uh, within like uh, sanctioned manners. And we, we, everything we problematize, uh, I mean, I don't wanna generalize everything, but you know, uh, as, as far as I see, uh, there's this tendency that generalize everything uh, when addressing the undoings of the former or the uh, present cultural politics uh, only through sanctioned, if not favored means. And uh, the context is great, but there's also some kind of, uh, you know, uh, cultural politics, cultural agencies that shapes it and we cannot ignore that. Can, can you uh, tell, tell us a bit more concrete? Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, for instance, uh, I, what I uh, told, uh, uh, mean by uh, cultural institutions or establishments is like, you know, for instance, uh, festivals, radios, especially in Germany, radio is a big thing, as you know. Uh, I don't know, uh, publishers, ensembles. Uh, uh, I'll give you a bit better example, actually. Uh, for instance, this event, right? Um, when, I see, when I look at this, this event, um, it's... It's, uh, it, looks like, uh, it looks like an event that actually embraces like diversity. We see com four composers, uh, Turkish guy, uh, you know, uh, although it's a male dominated event, uh, there's a female composer, uh, different age groups, and uh, I don't know, different kind of musics. But when, we, when I look at the biographies, we all uh, submitted to these uh, events. I do not see any kind of diversity, I, have to, I hate to say, and I include myself uh, in this critique as well, because I see uh, same kind of ensembles that are highlighted, like uh, pioneering ensembles, same kind of uh, festivals. Uh, and uh, base, I mean, uh, I, do, I am not very well informed about uh, you uh, as uh, people, but uh, I, I, I dare to say that uh, we are not all coming from uh, at least a uh, working class, I might be wrong, uh, and I, I, uh, I apologize in advance if I am. Um, so uh, when, uh, when, when I look at uh, each of us, um, uh, we, we, we represent some kind of diversity, but we do not necessarily, the, the social uh, spaces we are belong to does not necessarily uh, represent, uh, project any kind of diversity. You know, we all operate in the same, confined lines and I think this is a kind of problem but the you know the 
what you tell a confirmed is just uh, it's just a frame. Uh, what is kind of uh, you know what is opened for people to do different things. So if you tell uh, say the frame is not good because uh, it's better without a frame because without a frame there is more freedom. We just lose up that it's possible to see it. You know I think the 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 point is just about the cultural events is that uh, for example the the good ensembles. They are good. There's no, there's no doubt that the ensembles are good, and they create that people are watching what we are doing. Yeah, um, indeed, and course. I think that's important. Yeah, of course. I, I'm not saying that uh, these are like terribly wrong things. I'm saying that uh, as much as I uh, admire to work with these ensembles, uh, and I, 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 there's a reason I work with them. Uh, I have to also admit, uh, from my point of view, the uh, accessing them is not necessarily uh, uh, sets the same uh, conditions or uh, pre preconditions for everybody in the whole world. No. This is what I'm saying. And uh, we, when we like present our uh, biographies, I think the biography is a kind of an interesting writing. Uh, there's a reason why, at least for me, I mean, I cannot speak all of you, of course, and I don't wanna do that at all. Uh, but uh, I feel I'm, uh, I'm resigned to mention certain highlights which are not necessarily differ from uh, any of you or any of other colleagues, even the wordings are the same uh, from time to time. So uh, there's, a, I think th this is uh, some kind of a paradox, uh, you know, for a, for a, for a, um, a culture, a musical culture that, uh, that, uh, that it, not, especially nowadays that is obsessed too much with uh, the diversity and this kind of things. I think it, I think diversity is super interesting in art when you're talking about the art. So just talk if if we are talking about the most diverse possible art, that means that the artworks are as different as possible. Um, I'm just not so interested in the bio biographies. I don't know and so much about the biography of Schubert, and I don't. So if I want to learn more about Schubert, I just look on the at the pieces, and mm. I, I'm sure that the discussion is now. It is an important discussion to talk about the people who are doing the, the music, but I think much more important is that just that you talk about what it is uh, about the music. Uh, how it sounds and how it's how it's made and how it's made of and what it means and uh, and how can you? I think it's really big danger that people. It's more and more. I I get it very clearly that it's more and more that people just mix that up, uh, the art and the biography. And um, but sometimes it's just you know that for example, Turgut. If I look at your music. And I got get a score of you. Sure, I don't get that you have a Turkish background, and in fact, that doesn't matter. And the, at the moment, at the moment when I I conducted your music, mm -hmm. I don't think any no second I think about this is a music with a Turkish background because uh, I think your biography, knowing your biography, makes for me no difference in understanding your music. Yeah, uh, I actually, that's, uh, I'm really glad to hear that. But uh, I think uh, you are one of the few people in Germany uh, who actually have this uh, kind of quality, you know, because most of the uh, new music festivals, I mean, how many events uh, did I see so far, like uh, composers from Turkey or composers mm -hmm. from Mexico, think, think, crap like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that stems also from a certain uh, history, uh, which is uh, very much political in my view. And I'm glad you, you, uh, you actually uh, see things in, the, prefer to see things in that way. But I don't think uh, it uh, somehow projects uh, the main understanding uh, in our scene. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, this is what I feel. It's, an, it's a very interesting topic because somehow I have the feeling there is not one rule. So somehow we are in a quite luxury position when we could say uh, it's only about the artwork. No? It's not about the, the people behind. This comes out of a perspective, okay, yeah, we are, everybody is equal and so on. But, but in the question, for example, if we talk about the amount of female composers and composers, uh, male composers, or the fact that female composers are still paid 30% uh, less in Germany than 
male composers. So, and when we look to the gender diversity and things, then we see, ah, perhaps we have to do some work. And, but on the other side, and I had a nice conversation with a choreographer and uh, in, in dance, for example, they are much more advanced. It's, it's very mm. um, important in dance also to have companies with uh, people from different nationalities really to show the, the big variety of, of human beings. But then, and, and at the same time, there is nearly a censorship, I would say, from my perspective, because it was about, you know, including a string instrument or a string quartet, but then <laughs> this, girl, this choreographer said, yeah, but, you know, a string instrument, it's very Western. So uh, actually, there comes a point when you said, okay, uh, we really have to always to step back, right? And, and, but, but to, to balance these things, so are we already in a position that we can deal with it freely or do we have to do some work? Uh, point also for, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no please go ahead. Uh, yeah. um, it was silence, right? That's why I jumped in. <laughs> um, uh, there's one point that that struck me with Eno's um, point and, and which hugs back to Brigitte. So I'm leading these ensembles. These ensembles are composed of musicians. And one of the challenges that that is inherent is in these in these musicians is that they all come from each comes from a different music making background. So there's from techno to Korean court music from China to India to to Africa to all kinds of backgrounds. So every all these musicians are, you know, masters in their own tradition. They're well respected musicians. So there's no question of what one could call quality. However, that is measured. And but the fact that uh, almost two thirds of them cannot read music or never do that, not, at least not in the Western uh, common notation sense, um, makes every work uh, in that context a different negotiation about what can be done, what should be done, how should it be remembered, how should it be memorized, how should it go further, and how can we agree on something. Um, so if if you talk purely about musical terms, you won't get anywhere because you have to explain sometimes, for example, there's a simple thing like question and response in music, right? So I post something and you respond. What if the person that is responded to doesn't understand the response as a response? They said, that's not a response to what I did. But the other person says, yes, it's exactly, that's my response to, I mean, that's, that's exactly a musical response. So in this matter, there's no musical solution. The only solution is to go into a, a conversation or to accept the misunderstanding as something that is ultimately fruitful. But there's no um, talking about the purity and the clarity and the only musicness of the music. In such, and that's my experience in these ensembles, that we always have to go a step back, explain something, come back, do it again, um, understand why things don't work, um, uh, that should work. And everybody, you know, they're all master musicians, so it should work. They should be able to do it, but they, they, can't, they cannot do it for some reason or other. Sometimes it's a rhythm, sometimes it's a melodic phrasing. And you think, okay, so that's, that's interesting. That's, that's very fruitful, but it shows me that the purely musical part, you can, you know, you can even sing it, but it won't won't transpire, it won't, won't transpose into that other instrument or in that other language. And then you think, okay, so we have to talk about it in a different way, and we have to reach conclusions beyond the music. That's my experience. Well, maybe sometimes it's just good that you can't transpose one into the other because yeah. it's, it's different yeah. things. So it's uh, maybe it's just uh, about uh, respect for different traditions that you can't throw everything into one big uh, pot. Yeah, but you also cannot um, just say it's only about the music because they have to understand what they're doing. Mm. After yeah. all. There's, there's all this concept behind it when you do that. Matthias? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just thinking about it. It's, um, it's about also learning languages. We all stand in a certain cultural context, which is uh, marking us, but we can change it. We can widen it. 
and we can learn languages. And then of course the question is, do you want to learn that language or not? It's a freedom to make a choice there. And I'm very much with uh, Enu who says like, uh, maybe it doesn't make so much sense to transpose certain things. But then of course you can learn languages and as an artist can work with certain aspects in your work and you can even change uh, yeah, the, the, the way, um, the formats, the, the, the ensemble structures and stuff uh, to integrate it. But <clears throat> we can't get rid of, of this cultural framing we are all in. On the other hand, we see like, um, meanwhile, and this is where I'm not completely with you, Sunday, with your urological art musicking. Um, this is not that heterogenic, not that homogenic anymore as it used to be, because the schools, the leading, the powerful leading paradigms are dissolving. And actually, there is not just um, cultural establishment, even in your music festivals, meanwhile, because many of them opened up to, let's say, something which used to be partial culture or subculture even, uh, forms of improvised music in, in the Euro European style, improvised music and so on and so forth. They were like refused, used to be refused. Now they are part of the dialogue, of the discourses. So, uh, and definitely it's like uh, what Turgut also mentioned, the biographies are somehow similar very often, even if you have to, if you, um, uh, have to do with artists coming from very, very different oranges, because most of the times people who are not from families in Europe are then um, educated in European or in American um, art music institutions. And of course, they take it up, they take up the languages and they want to go there. So um, I feel like there is a much higher diversity and complexity in these processes as we very often address it, being critical about certain sociological or political aspects in it. I have two comments on this. The first is that I love misunderstanding I think understanding is not always uh, the, the cannot always be the the end. You know, for example, I I looked like uh, in in Berlin um, a theater piece from Indonesia hours long, four hours, five hours. I have no idea what happens in this piece and who's the bad guy and who's the good guy. But that's no, it doesn't matter. So I think I really love non-European culture for that I'm not able to understand it. And that makes me kind of creative and makes me like inch in uh, sure about uh, my own culture stuff. So I think understanding is not always the point. The second point is um, that many of the traditional cultures in non-European countries are as marginalized as the contemporary music in Europe. So I think when you uh, musicians who you are talking about, like Korean court music or gagaku or whatever, these are super marginalized. So you know the mm. the fusion music, this kind of uh, Anglo-American music and saxo. You know you have saxophones all over the world, like putting everything, uh, covering it with the kind of this. Uh, uh, this creamy, uh, you know, and you have the uh, four four bar stuff um, all over the world. Like, you know, I think the traditional cultures are, for, for example, for Japanese people, gagaku music is as strange as for us because they have no contact with that. And I think uh, this is interesting because uh, sure for you, it's easy to make an ensemble with marginalized people from, from high cultures all around the world. Um, because of, uh, for sure, this is interesting, but it's not so far, again, not so far as, as we could think, because uh, it's not this, it's, so, it's everybody, just people fighting against this 95% uh, global, uh, smooth, uh, like uh, easy listening shit. Can I say something about the urological, because you directly spoke to me about that. 
Um, so what it means is basically what Turgut just mentioned, that there is a tradition of music making that we all share. Uh, there are gateways that we have all passed through. Um, and when uh, uh, festival programs music from Korea or music from Turkish composers and so on, what they want is not music from any Turkish composers, from, but from those composers who have gone through the urological training. That's what they want to present. And that's what I meant by this. So there's, it, it's not Western music anymore. That's true because it's Turkish music, it's Chinese music, it's, it's whatever. It's not Western in this old sense. That's why I chose this new word to say it's urological because it, it is music that has passed through this particular gateway of uh, making music. Uh, happen through orchestras, through electronics, through computers that have um, that where, where you're being taught in, in Western style academies how this works. And I know enough musicians who are never taught in such academies who are also great musicians. And sometimes, you know, much uh, musicians that I respect much more than other musicians who have gone through these pathways. Um, and uh, who would never appear in such a context. And that's and they, these are musicians from Indonesia or from, from Senegal or something who do not work in this, in, in this context. I, I meant this context, this particular context that we're in right now, where we are urological. It, we're not all European, but we're all urological. Um, as a curator, I have, uh, this is a really big dilemma because there's two possibilities. So um, I can invite the music, musician from Senegal only if he writes like Senegalese steel, style, because so I want him not to develop into something else. I just want some traditional stuff because the people come from traditional societies, whatever. Or uh, the other way around is I take the con uh, Senegalese composer only if he writes like Fernie Howe, otherwise I, I wouldn't invite him. So uh, that, I think that's, just not, uh, that's not an easy question because I think it's, it depends always on um, very special and very personal topics and for sure it's good to think about your criteria what is uh, what does it mean uh, to be interested in something but um, I think both is not is, it's not alone like I, I don't think that people really in Europe only want uh, composers from different countries who composed like European composers. I think that's not just not true. No, but uh, uh, the, 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 the other case is also problematic, right? Because, uh, you know, if you're, uh, if, if, the, if the creators or festival directors are only interested in your work and looking for some, uh, as they would term it, uh, like uh, traditional or cultural references, that means they have certain kind of categorization about your background or uh, about your culture. And uh, I'll give you a specific uh, example. Like uh, last time I was in Ekla, uh, I had this orchestra piece mm -hmm. and a very uh, um, kind of a well-known uh, creator in Germany, uh, whom I really like, by the way, uh, approached to me. And uh, she said that, oh, it was a really nice piece, but uh, you know, I would be really interested if I could hear uh, more, more about your background. Although the piece had a certain really direct cultural references but she, what she meant was like some kind of uh, Turkish music elements or things like that although she didn't say it okay. uh, now my background of course I'm from uh, uh, Turkey but uh, also uh, uh, Stanford University is also my background but uh, she chose to you know uh, set a certain categorization profiling <laughs> for my background and I think this is a problem you know it's it's okay uh, you don't uh, Maybe uh, people do not care about, uh, you know, Korean or Turkish Mexican composers who write like Rahman or Fernio, but, uh, you know, just using uh, certain cultural and traditional references uh, as representations. As a sign, like Fazil Zayl, you have plus the sign uh, that you are Turkish and you can sell it better. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it it's also goes for the, the Turkish composers as well. They know yeah. for granted, you know, it's the kind of a, a product to be sold. Yeah. Like I would oh. use like a bit of an motive in every piece. It would be better to show that I'm a German composer. Yeah, or, po or even some po march, uh, marching, march <laughs> music. Or even political causes, because, yeah. uh, you know, the Turkish politics, uh, you know, uh, occupy a certain, uh, yeah. you know, uh, agenda in the German, German scene. I have to say, uh, frankly.
So um, I, f I find it interesting that this discussion, and maybe Brigitte knows this from gender discussions, always mm -hmm. goes along. Now, the two people with non European names um, have one kind of opinion, and the others with European names have another kind of opinion. I find it very interesting. But um, it shows that there's still there's still something to that there are other experiences behind what we say, and I think that's that's a very important um, thing that emerges for me um, in this discussion. Yes, yeah, somehow, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit skeptical because on the one hand, you know, what what brings up this these kind of trends, yeah. Is it a trend to say, uh, or is it a really a, a trend that says, uh, "Hey, we have to we have to look more global. We have to incorporate yeah, much more diversity." This is not just a trend. It's, it's something that uh, we we really need as human beings to develop and to 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 create a future together, right? So, but on the other hand, of course, we have institutions in Germany, especially because in Germany uh, all the commissions we get it's all i mean most of it is paid by public money so they have these big themes you know for the next three years it's digitalization or it's appropriation or it's uh, decolonization or it's so and of course these topics are just put there and then as an as an offer i would say yeah as an offer but also with political strategies and and whatever so, and we are dealing with it because what, what you are saying to it, the same happened to me uh, with a Chinese composer who said, uh, I know these are these Chinese composer and they are just trying to merge Chinese and, and, and uh, music with avant-garde uh, contemporary music from Germany. It's so boring. So, no? so these conflicts are on both sides and they are, and the question is always, am I here as a person? Am I here as an artist? Am I here as, uh, yeah, but, I must say, somehow I see this contemporary music scene. It's 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 very small. No, it's very limited, and it's like every other scene. It's very limited, and uh, I would just wish so that this uh, that it's not only about uh, okay, we invite a group from uh, in, in an African drum group or a gamelan group and a contemporary music ensemble, but much more like thinking about okay, what 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 is it about right now? No? What kind of dialogue do we want to? Do you want to communicate? And then it doesn't matter if we have a piece of music from, from this country or from this country or an installation from here, an artist from there and film from somewhere else. So it could help really to, to open this perspective uh, much more wider. I, I think it's uh, important to uh, introduce, uh, you know, such cultures, but uh, I think the key point in this case is, uh, you know, when you, uh, I, I'm not a creator, so I don't understand this kind of thing. So please correct me if I'm exceeding my limits, but uh, you know, for me, a concert is not, it does not consist of a stage. You know, this, this is why I talked about uh, like festivals, radios, they have all their, you know, agencies. Uh, so you have to, uh, you know, address these agencies as well. Uh, you know, when you, uh, you know, invite, uh, I don't know, some uh, Congolese ensemble or uh, composer from Turkey and these kind of things. Otherwise, uh, because, you know, uh, there are certain uh, uh, impact fields which you cannot control. You know, uh, I remember uh, I was doing this interview with VDR. I, I, I can't really remember the uh, guy I interviewed it, but uh, all of a sudden uh, the whole interview turned uh, from um, complex music to Hey, uh, what can uh, Germany do uh, to improve situation in Turkey? You know, uh, and it's not a coincidence. It's not a lack of uh, seriousness or anything. It's I think it stems from a certain uh, agency that is being uh, around us. So we have to also uh, address all these kind of uh, political agencies. This is what I'm saying. And otherwise, it's just, uh, you know, you give, uh, uh, I don't want to dominate the talk by talking too much, but, you know, uh, it's, you know, at the end of the day, uh, there are uh, uh, certain people who would actually only see uh, the struggles given by women or underrepresented groups as just trans, as you say. And that's, that's the biggest risk we take, actually because it becomes a cartoon, the whole struggle, because the, the problems are real. 
you know, the uh, gender inequality, racism, and all these kind of things are real. But you know, we just uh, seem to have our own ways to uh, address these things uh, from a distance by putting these uh, buffer zones in between. And that really uh, bothers me because the people who are responsible, you know, uh, yielding to this kind of problems are uh, not dead. You know, they're not just old people. They're uh, maybe my friends, you know, uh, may, 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 maybe uh, the professors I respect so much, they're part of the problem. Maybe I am even part of the problem. Uh, that's why I think uh, we have, uh, we, we need some kind of uh, self-critique uh, for this in itself. Here's a question by Jeremy. Maybe I can open this to the question by Jeremy about uh, identity. And he, Jeremy writes that there's no more important factor to a composer's music than who they are and where they are from. And um, I think just, I don't agree. Um, so for me, this is really not important. So you sure you can say I'm from Germany and I'm male and I'm just raised into a world of contemporary music. So for me, that was normal. So maybe my identity makes uh, plays a very big role, but I never think about that. And um, I really try to write as different pieces as possible. So, um, so the word identity feels like I have to fine and to fix to something what is my identity and that is not my identity but my approach is to uh, when I finish a piece to make in the next piece something completely different because just to to go on so the to find a way of diversity in my work itself because I I'm really interested in so many different things it's not possible to really stay to something what is fixed and um, to reduce myself to something what is, you know, identity is kind of a very, uh, it's, it's a, that, that's a very common word now because everybody talks about identity, but I'm not interested in that because I, I think finding out what is po possible and what can I do, um, I can change totally and I can be influenced by this and I can be influenced by that. And that's even more interesting, um, the more I'm influenced by different things. And um, that's much more important for me. Well, for me, uh, I don't care about identity as well. I don't care about being a Turkish composer or uh, I don't know, some East composer, like complex East composer, whatever. But uh, I, have, I feel like it is my responsibility to uh, somehow address uh, Certain certain identities, uh, at least uh, underrepresented identities, that 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 still uh, having some uh, problems to uh, have room in the scene. So uh, in that case, it's really important for me to uh, have a, a you know a female composer in the same uh, concert program or uh, some other underrepresented uh, identity. So I don't. Birgitta, is that for you important if a piece is written by a woman or a man? Um, as a composer, not, but as a curator of a of a female festival. So for Musica Nova, it's important. Sure. But if you lost, for example, if you listen to a piece in the radio, you turn the radio on and you think, oh, this is great music. And you think first, is it a, a woman or a man who wrote that piece? No, 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 definitely not. So I, uh, of course, I don't care about it. And, and regarding this question, I only see uh, one important point, And this is that, uh, that females didn't have the history that men had. They didn't have the role models. They didn't have... Uh, the people around them who are saying, "Hey, I know you get it. So it's it's your you are here on earth to write this great big piece." So yeah, it was not there. So and this is something that is carried through the generations, from years, decades, yeah, thousands. So um, I think it is it is our responsibility now to create these role models and to support to support this. And this is also the reason why I'm doing this festival. And I was, of course, really struggling with a with a with a question: ah, Do we need a women's festival, yeah? or it, now it's a gender an LGBTQ festival? Do we really need this? But I think yes. In this case, yeah, we need it because we have to work on this uh, on on the fact that uh, I truly believe that the body is only a stage, 
Yeah, of course, our sex is given by nature, but what we do out of it, it's 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 the stage. So we can put it in C. We can, we should, uh, we should be free to choose, right? So, and this is not established in our society, definitely not. So there's work to do. But but right now I'm also worrying about the young men, right? So the men which are now 16, let's say 15, 16, and I'm questioning who is giving them a role model? Who's their role model? Because all the young women, they are supported strongly in many countries. So, no? uh, so now, but then I already think, okay, do it have to be the women who support them? But but that's uh, perhaps a side. Yeah, maybe you need a festival for young men. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah. There are also already so many festivals for men. Actually, I think. So, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but I think this question is very um, very nice from Anonyma Sushar. Um, it's very interesting this question of appropriation. And uh, Tugat, you were also mentioning um, cultural appropriation in the very beginning of this talk. And uh, I would like, because there is a there is a little bit of gap on the one hand. So uh, if we go for hybridization and if we say, hey, it's about uh, with a big vision, perhaps of a hyper culture, no, which is not a trans culture, really a hyper culture where it can raise up uh, new uh, new, let's say, new traditions, perhaps, or temporary traditions, or new forms of different uh, traditions. Um, so then we think in a very free way about adapting. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, appropriation is something very existential because we need to appropriate to, to be educated, to, be, to develop ourselves. No? And in the moment, of course, of cultural appropriation, uh, this term has a negative connotation because uh, it's connected to the colonization right, or to practical um, in this uh, taking something that is, doesn't belong to us or to, to treat it in a, um, in a way that we make, that, we, that there is a hierarchy popping up. But uh, I truly believe that uh, appropriation is something very good and that we should really go for this. We should be able, we should create a situation where we are able to, uh, to work with, with all these materials around it and really to go in a deep, um, uh, in a deep connection with it. So, but we have to do it, it's not possible right now. I think it's um, right now we have to be, we have to deal very carefully with these things. So, uh, Brigitte, just a short question. Who is the we you're talking about? Who are the we? Who is the we? Yeah, that's a good question, Sandy. Actually, um, I think that this uh, to, to, be, uh, to be confronted with cultural appropriation is always, uh, are always the Western, uh, the, the Western cultures. Hmm? Well, I think no, the, the confrontation is for the others, mostly, right? So there's uh, uh, mm -hmm. Western right. cultures also appropriated by, by say, um, a growing Chinese industry, growing Japanese yeah. culture over the 20th century. Western culture was appropriated in a very decisive way and, and in ways that was not controlled by Westerners. Um, so it has been happening in many directions, but when, we, when one takes the perspective of we have to, I think it's, it's worthwhile to think who the we is because in most cases it means, um, I don't know how you call it in a, in a neutral way, but it means kind of European, uh, North American, North, North, you know, this kind of um, people. Uh, and I would just caution that maybe the we is not the same for everybody else. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, would you would you, um, uh, you you would blame, let's say, a Western composer? We had the big discussion so two weeks ago with the uh, with my class. No, and they say and they asked me, yeah, would would they blame me in Dona Eshing if I would write a piece as a Western composer and with the traditional African rhythms, which I found in the internet somewhere there? Would would I, would I, would this be a problem for me? I say, yeah, it could be a problem. But would it be a problem on the other way around? This is what you are asking, right? 
Uh, no, also yeah. because uh, Anna was saying that it's only the music that counts. In that case, probably it's whether there is a personal relationship. If there's a, if there is something that where the people who you know usually make that rhythm or who usually play with that rhythm are in some way engaged with what happens in that concert in some way, uh, whether it's um, uh, studying with them, you know, taking the same gateway that they have taken to get there, and then you use that. Um, that's what we expect from other cultures too, that they cannot just simply write an orchestra piece uh, the way they want it. They have to do it the way we can can play it, you know. So we. And 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 that's where the that's where the difficulty starts. It's not about the appropriation of a of an object, it's about the appropriation of a living ecosystem that is surrounded by like Western art too, you know, by many other discourses. You are working with visual arts and digital technologies. We are all working with digital technologies. Um, we work with, with, with different modes of perception. We work with different experiences, uh, poetry, whatever. And, and all that informs what we do in some way or another. And it's the same with every other tradition. And just to take one thing out and say, so this is that for me, and I will make something else of it, is maybe OK in some contexts. But it's certainly not okay if you if you take it as a purely as a mining operation, so to speak. The, the big word about this is you know um, extractivism, where you you just extract things from one culture, uh, like a mining operation would take gold or cobalt out of here with no regard for where, where it comes from, what it hap what happens to the people you take it from, and so on. So that's that's the question here, I think. At least for me. It's it it doesn't you can't you can't do it um, in the insouciant way where you say okay so it's it's a, it's a material I can just take it no so it's 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 it's, anon it's anonymous material it's not anonymous somebody made it and somebody has engaged with it over their lifetime it's certainly not anonymous of course this this I meant also with the with the deep connection that you develop no, in uh, in relation to uh, ship to the material that you use so mm. but the, this is of course important or your name is Mauricio Kabel Kagel and you write exotica no you, you do it the, really the way around so I think respect is the most important thing and it's the respect for the African drums, but the respect for the orchestra musicians and the respect for whatever you so you know what you whatever you, you work with as an artist, you have to respect that. I think otherwise, why just work with something else or do something else? Because I think respect is uh, the uh, is the most important for 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 the work, but also for the communication. If you work, uh, if you just uh, if you don't respect the the communication, will be wrong. And that's where it gets tricky because respect is not something that you can decide. Yeah. I mean, you can say I'm respectful, but the yeah. other person may not feel it. Right. So uh, you, you enter into this relation immediately. And that's what I think is yeah. important there. Right. You can't do better being embedded in your own cultural identity coding. You can't do better. We could add maybe that as the last round, because I don't know how to conclude this discussion actually, because it's it touched so many very important uh, aspects, but it's uh, it's not the end of this discussion. Um, so maybe we could we could make a short round, because also we cannot answer all the interesting um, questions and topics which came up, and the. Um, frequent in the uh, question and answer files. So um, should we make a short round, like say comprising um, wishful, wishful aspects, features of future developments here? I mean, I'm completely with Enro to say like respect, I would add the hierarchization uh, in institutions, in, in the way how we how we work in this field, is is important. Also, that there should be a playfulness in the way how we deal with each other. There should be humor, and there should be a difference making between aesthetical issues in music and the arts in general, and sociology, politics, 
institutional aspects. For me, this is important to say because I very often have the feelings right now in the current discussion that this is mingling all the time and that creates a lot of difficulties in discourse. Who likes to, to express a certain wishful uh, uh, wishes for things which could be improved and widened? So sometimes I, uh, so in the last time I wish so much that we don't have this fear that we lose something, especially right now in these pandemic times. So of course we lose something, but but we win also a lot. No, so we we open up new platforms. There there's a whole world popping up also, and uh, yeah, and this this fear of of loss is very often connected to uh, to keeping the status quo. No? And uh, somehow I really I really would love. Um, especially in the contemporary music scene that there is more, I don't know, more experimental spirit. So of not having the, the in mind, oh, I lose everything. It's just about shifting. It's about shifting some the ground a little bit. I have a wish for the future. Um, talking about identity, I think the whole dis discussion about identity at the, uh, at the moment it's so much about separating people and people are discussing about I am this and you are that and we can't talk to each other and even maybe this becomes worse and worse and I think that's not the point I think it's diversity is something else because it's great to be different but if people don't stay together if the people stop being part of the same world people stop talking to each other because identity means i can't talk to you anymore that is really dangerous and i think that is my really biggest wish uh, so i think that the discourse and the you know all the thoughts about that maybe are important but we really need to uh, avoid that we separate from each other I, I totally agree with that actually, but uh, with a with an exception, as always. Maybe I don't know. Um, I, I I understand what you say, and I, and I totally I am totally on the same page. But uh, there are, we shouldn't forget that there are also identities that still give uh, struggles to exist, you know, in the world. Especially now we are talking about uh, virtually in Turkey. Uh, and I don't want to, uh, you know, drag the discussion to a Turkish extent. Uh, we, we should at least acknowledge that there are certain identities giving uh, struggles to uh, exist, not to separate uh, themselves from uh, or counter, counter position themselves from uh, other identities. So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying there, uh, there is a war going on or there is a war going on, but if you don't, if there's no war going on, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is also a peace. Uh, in we are living so um, I guess I, I don't have any wishes for the future so uh, I rather um, prefer to uh, find means to shape it I don't wish for anything actually um, yeah I also have difficulties with that question because um, one of the you know, overarching feelings that I have is that um, the future that we all imagine will never come, as, as I said it before, because um, we all know that there's an immense pressure cooker on humanity right now, which is the question of um, agency and effectiveness by climate changes and by our actions that affect these, these, these fundamental issues that are also unequally experienced by different people, inhabitants of this planet. Some already are in the middle of the Anthropocene of the of the of the of the climate of the climate change, and others, most indigenous people, are already 500 years into it, and we seem to discover it now. Um, I think there's there's a hope for me that that's my super utopian hope for music. That music being uh, an art of time and an art, uh, a way of dealing with time and evolutions 
may help us understand the big evolutions that we are surrounded by and that we have not been able to grasp yet. Uh, we talk about climate change in, you know, with graphics and numbers. I would like to imagine a way to think about it in, in listening to, to music or in, in, under experiencing, in experiencing musical time. I don't know how to do that yet, but that's, that's, my, that's my, my, my wish for myself for the future that I can maybe go there at some point. Hey, thank you, Sandeep. I think we should take this as a, as a way to conclude this discussion, which can't be concluded, should go on. I would like to thank you all very much for a very lively and um, yeah, beautifully enough controversial discussion. I would like to thank all um, participants in the outside um, uh, discussion which came up with questions. I apologize that we cannot answer all these que questions here, but I hope that we have touched some of uh, the topics. Yeah, so um, thank you all very much. And I would hope, and this is my wish for the future, that we can present <coughs> music as part of the Arta Music Festival in one of the next issues. That's my hope. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.